Hey everyone, this is Jerry with San Pedro Mastery. In this video, I will show you how to easily grow the San Pedro cactus from seeds. The simple method, which does not involve sterilizing the soil, is also valid for other sacred cacti, such as the Peruvian torch, the Bolivian torch, or even the peyote. Make sure you stay until the end of the video, because after the step-by-step -step tutorial, I will answer the most common questions that people have about starting San Pedro from seeds. First off, let's go through the ingredients we will need. Some regular potting soil, like the one you can buy at the supermarket. Some perlite. Perlite is very easy to find, I will tell you later on where you can buy it. Some bottled drinking water. Don't use tap water as it contains chloride. A small plastic container, in which we will mix the soil, the perlite and some of the water. Your San Pedro seeds. Make sure they are unpollinated and that the seller produces them himself. A spray bottle, so that you can humidify the seeds before wrapping the container. And lastly, some transparent film, like the one you use in the kitchen, to wrap up the container. That's all you need. Now let's see how it's done, step by step. Like I mentioned, this is the quick and easy method, which does not involve sterilizing the soil. Sterilizing the soil is better, as you may encounter less problems later on, and you can keep the container enclosed for several months, which means you won't have to water for all that time. But not sterilizing the soil is fine too, as long as you give the cacti the best conditions and most importantly, that you check on them on a regular basis. Even if that's just looking at them 10 seconds a day, you will be able to spot any problem in its early stages. The seeds will need a very humid climate in order to germinate. And then, once they are born, the seedlings will need a progressive transition towards a much drier climate. I will show you how to do that. Also, you can start seeds at any moment of the year, not just spring. You just gotta make sure you give them the right conditions. So, let's go through the ingredients needed one more time. Regular potting soil. When you go to the store, look at the ingredients on the bags and try to get one that is just made of peat, also called peat moss, and preferably without fertilizer. However, the San Pedro is not very picky and pretty much any commercial soil will do. Usually, potting soil contains hard bits in it like wood or bark. You can remove those by hand or using a screen. Perlite. You can buy perlite at garden stores, cannabis supply stores, pet stores, or even online. If you don't have perlite, you can replace it by pumice, but pumice is very dusty, so make sure that it's washed or otherwise wash it yourself. Bottled drinking water, so that we can wet the soil. It's important that you use spring water, as it does not contain chloride, which could harm the baby cacti. A plastic container, you don't have to pay for one. In this case, I will use the flimsy plastic tray that contains tomatoes from the supermarket. This is a perfect size for 50 to 100 seeds. It is also about 7.5 cm tall, or 3 inches tall, which is perfect. This is going to be the soil level, just over 1 inch. This leaves room for the cacti to grow even with a lid on. You want a container preferably over 5 cm tall, or 2 inches tall. You may want to pierce some holes at the bottom so that the excess of water can drain. Too much water staying for too long could make the roots rot. On a flimsy container like this one, you could make holes with a cutter or if you use thicker plastic, with a drill. Make the holes about the diameter of a pen for good drainage and put quite a few of them, like about 9 on this container. A roll of cling film, that's how it's called in the UK and it's called saran wrap in the States. We will wrap up the container in this to create a humid, tropical-like climate inside. And obviously you will need some seeds. If you have not bought your seeds yet, I highly recommend you watch my video Why Most San Pedro Seeds Are a Ripoff, in which I explain why many of the San Pedro seeds for sale are not even San Pedro. In this video I will tell you what you need to look out for when shopping for San Pedro seeds. It's gotta be one part soil to one part perlite, 50-50. First, I put the perlite and I wet it. I like to wet it first to avoid breathing perlite dust, which is not good for you. Then I add the soil and mix it. Some people will tell you that you need to also incorporate coarse sand, fine sand and gravel to the mix. You can do that if you want, but that's not necessary. 50% regular potting soil and 50% perlite is all you need for the first year or so of your seedlings. Then later on, you can repot them in individual pots using the same kind of mix but with less perlite, say about 
I go into more details in another one of my videos titled How to care for Sempelo cactus seedlings. Instead of mixing your own soil, you can also use store-bought, ready-made cactus soil. That will work alright, but keep in mind that my mix of 50% soil, 50% perlite is better for germinating. You then have to add bottled water at room temperature until the soil is a bit wet but not soaking wet. Squeeze some soil in your hand. If you can squeeze out the water, then it's too wet. Just a few drops falling is okay. Place the seeds on top of the soil, do not bury them, and then mix them with some water. Always bottled water, no tap water. Wrap some transparent film around the container so that the climate inside it remains humid. Obviously, be careful not to tip the container too much when doing that. The container must be placed in a spot full of light but without any direct sun. It can be in the sun if covered by a rag to filter the rays. But be careful this does not raise the temperature of the soil too much, because with higher temperatures come problems. Daytime temperatures for germinating should be between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. In Fahrenheit that's between 68 and 86. The ideal temperature being 23 Celsius, which is 74 Fahrenheit. If you have not sterilized the soil, then try to keep the temperatures on the lower end of the spectrum because white mold and other kinds of problems appear more easily with stamps above 27 Celsius or 81 Fahrenheit. In winter, the room temperature may not reach 23 Celsius or 74 Fahrenheit, in which case you can move the tray closer to a heater and monitor the temperature with a thermometer. Maybe you have a heating mat made for seedlings or reptiles, you can use that. Just make sure the temperature of the soil remains around 23 Celsius 74 Fahrenheit. This temperature only has to be reached during the daytime. You can let it drop lower at night time. Remember that germinating depends on three things. The wetness of the soil, it's gonna be a bit wet but not too much. The amount of light, plenty of light but no direct sun. Seedlings should appear within about 10 days after sowing them. If they do not come up, then you probably did not wet the soil enough. Providing you bought quality seeds that are fresh, we'll assume your seeds are still dormant. They may finally germinate once the soil is fully dry for the first time and then gets its first watering. Seeds need a dry wet cycle in order to trigger the germination process. If they didn't come up at the beginning, then they will probably come up at the next dry wet cycle after the transparent film has been removed. Take a look at the plants, preferably on a daily basis to make sure everything is okay. If white mold appears, looking a bit like a spider web, then you need to remove the parts that have been contaminated and hope it doesn't spread. Search immediately for advice on the net, you could lose all plants in a matter of hours or days. The cause for that is often unwashed seeds that carry contaminants, like I explained in my other video why most San Pedro seeds are a ripoff. If the plants are getting red, they have too much sun. You have to decrease their light exposure. If the plants are rotting, then you probably have the soil too wet. You will need to start opening the leads earlier than planned so that the humidity reduces. A very small percentage of plants rotting can be normal, depending on the species or strain. But a higher percentage of plants rotting is not normal and will require the humidity to be lowered. You may remember that earlier in the video, I mentioned that the seeds must be started with a very humid climate and then progressively change to a drier climate. How do you do that? Well, you pierce some holes in the film with a pen. First, just one hole at one corner, another one at the opposite corner. Then about four days later, make it five holes in total. Then another four days later, punch about 10 more holes, spreading them evenly. Four days later, tear the holes larger with your finger. Then, another four days later, take it off completely. When I say four days, it can be three or five, it's just an indication. While you progressively punch holes in the lid, make sure the soil does not dry out completely. If it does, then try spraying some water through the holes. Very young seedlings do not tolerate dry soil for very long. When should you start punching holes? Well, that is a tough one to answer. If you start just a few days after the cacti have germinated, when they are still very tiny, 
you will have less probability of getting mold, but you have to check on a daily basis that the soil is not dry. If on the other hand, you leave them all enclosed, you may end up with problems due to the enclosed wet environment. Leaving the container closed for a long time is fine with sterilized soil, but more risky with unsterilized soil. Personally, I would prefer to start punching holes not too long after the cacti have come up, and then I make sure that the soil does not dry out until they have built some strength. You have to water them very gently at the beginning because the pressure from the water can easily make them tip over. So if they are very young, start with misting, don't use a watering can. When you water them, you have to give them a generous amount of water until it starts coming out of the draining holes. You should water them as soon as the soil is dry, but do not leave them for more than a couple of days with the soil fully dry. If you are going away for a few days, then I suggest giving them water just before you leave. When the plants are about two months old, you can start letting the soil dry completely for a day or two between each watering. Cacti actually like dry wet cycles. When they are older, they will become more and more tolerant to lack of water. And if you are growing peyotes, be aware you may want to give them water less often than Trichocerus cacti like the San Pedro. If you start to see a lot of small flies around the container, it's likely to be fungus gnats, whose larva will eat the roots of your cacti. The seedlings will fall flat without any roots. The gnats feast on the youngest seedlings, as they have the most tender roots. After about a year, it will be time for you to replant the seedlings, at least those that have survived, in individual pots. It's very simple, but nevertheless, you'll find that explained in my video, How to Care for San Pedro Cactus Seedlings. Growing cacti from seeds is not that difficult, but it requires checking them on a daily basis. If you don't think you're able to do that, then I suggest buying seedlings that are already a year old, you will save yourself all the work. Before I let you go, I would like to answer the three most common questions people have about growing San Pedro from seeds. The first one is, should I sterilize the soil? Sterilizing the soil is not difficult. It can be done various ways, most commonly with a pressure cooker or with a microwave oven. I have a video that shows you how to do it. Obviously, sterilizing the soil involves a bit more effort at the beginning, but then afterwards, you won't have to do anything for months. You can leave the plants wrapped up in film for up to six to eight months. You won't need to water them during that time, and you probably won't have a problem with fungus gnats since they cannot get in. Sterilizing the soil also reduces the likeliness of having to deal with white mold. So, should you sterilize the soil? Probably yes, if you are growing a lot of seeds. But it's probably not worth it if you're growing just 20 seeds and you want something quick and simple to get acquainted with the hobby. Should I grow them under the sun or under a T5 tube? This is a question with a similar answer to the previous one. You can perfectly grow San Pedro from seeds without a T5 tube. But a T5 tube is very cheap and using one has some advantages. The seeds pretty much always germinate under a T5, providing of course that you bought fresh seeds. If on the other hand, you rely on ambient light or filtered sun for them to germinate, it's possible that some cloudy days disrupt the germination process. After germination, you can either leave them under the T5 tube or move them to the sunlight, your choice. You can germinate seeds and grow seedlings all year round under a T5, including in winter. Although if you grow in winter, you may need to place a small eating mat underneath the container. You can buy a mat online or from a pet shop as some animals need them. Please note that it has to be a T5, not a T8 or any other format, and it has to be a fluorescent T5, not a LED T5, with a color of about 6500K. Set at a height of about 38 centimeters, that's 15 inches, above the soil level. T5s come in all length, the most common ones being 2 feet and 4 feet. My seeds did not germinate, why is that? Here we list the four most common reasons for seeds not to germinate, in order of relevance. Number one, what is by far the most common reason for seeds failing to germinate is old non-viable seeds. Usually, if seeds don't come up, it's not your fault. 
is because the seeds you bought are old, and for that reason, their germination rate is low. I've noticed pretty much every single seed store says their seeds are fresh, whether they are or not. If you have not watched my video why most San Pedro seeds are a ripoff, please do it now, as it explains what kind of information you should look for when buying San Pedro seeds. Number 2. Not enough light during germination. That is the second most common reason for seeds not to germinate. If you did not provide them with enough light at the beginning, then the germination process would be messed up, and the seeds may not come up for a while until the next dry wet cycle. Some of them may even never germinate. This is another reason for getting fresh seeds from a reputable source. If something goes wrong, then you can rule out the seeds as the cause. Otherwise, you just won't know what went wrong and you cannot really learn from that failure. Number 3. Soil too wet or too dry. The wetness of the soil is something that most people will usually get right, especially with a simple soil recipe like the one explained in this video. When you gain experience and start to change the recipe by adding other elements, this is when you are more likely to screw it up. You don't want the surface of the soil to appear dry, and you don't want either any puddle of water. Number 4. Incorrect temperature. It's rare for that to be the reasons for the seeds not to germinate, as it's quite easy to give them a daytime temperature between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. That's 68 to 86 Fahrenheit. Personally, the only one of these four reasons where I still fail from time to time is the wetness of the soil, especially if I add new ingredients. For instance, when I started to use local cactus soil, I found the wetness was right when mixing the soil and sowing the seeds. But then, strangely enough, after some time the top layer of the soil ended up drying up a bit and some of the seeds did not germinate. So now, when I prepare this soil, I add a bit more water. The other three reasons of failures are quite easy to control. The seeds? Well, you just find a seller that sells fresh seeds that he produces himself. The light? You make sure it's going to be sunny for 10 days, or you buy a T5 tube. And the temperature? Well, make sure the ambient temperature is within the acceptable range, and you should be good. That's it for this video, my friends. If you want to buy some of the San Pedro seeds that I produce myself, I have a wide range of them. Or if you want to buy some seedlings grown from the same seeds, please send me an email. My email address can be found in the description of this video. I will also make it appear now on the screen. Just send me a quick email saying that you want my list of seeds and seedlings, and I will email it to you, together with pictures. My seeds are unpollinated, with the species and strains correctly identified. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit like and subscribe, like this you won't miss my future San Pedro uploads. See you very soon.